Let's talk now about how is this test validated? What has been done to prove that it's correct in terms of identifying IBS patients? The first iteration of this was a very small study, just a pilot study that showed that there seemed to be a difference between IBS and inflammatory bowel disease patients. But we needed a large scale study. The problem with irritable bowel syndrome is the Rome criteria are vague. Rome criteria are these symptom criteria where if you have pain, you have change in bowel function, and you have bloating, then you meet the criteria and, and there's a structured outline of what that is. The problem is a lot of patients with inflammatory bowel disease meet that criteria. So we were looking for a cohort or a group of patients that were absolutely irritable bowel syndrome. So we were able to get plasma samples from 2,300 patients from an FDA-approved clinical trial for irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea. So basically, all these patients had to have had a colonoscopy, had to have ruled out parasites, had to have ruled out infections of the gut, and many other things, and then apply the Rome criteria. So these are perfect IBS patients. We then compared those to inflammatory bowel disease patients who are on no biologic agents, so that they're not having any immunosuppression that could affect the blood test and then celiac patients and healthy controls. So this was a massive undertaking for the PLOS-1 paper that was ultimately published. And what we showed was that the test was highly specific and for the detection of irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea over other diarrheal diseases like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, or celiac disease. But as time went on, we started to realize that we could improve the test. And so a second iteration of the test took place where we were able to optimize the epitope. And what that means is that we improve the conformation of the protein to make the epitope more exposed in order to improve antibody binding. By doing that, we were able to create a 2.0 version of the test, which has become IBS smart. With this improved version, we're now able to separate IBS from IBD with a specificity of over 90% just using anti-CDTB and over 90% just using anti-vinculin. When both are positive, the post-test probability of having IBS is over 98%. So the improvement on the test has been quite remarkable and we're very excited about that.